That is such a beautiful shot. This was originally filmed by Voyager 2 Pro as it was approaching Jupiter. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about the Jupiter's Great Red Spot, also sometimes known as GRS for short. And specifically I wanted to focus on the mysteries of this great spot, because as you might have heard from some of the other sources, in the last few decades it's been kind of shrinking, and so there is actually a possibility of this spot disappearing. But I wanted to discuss some of the recent studies and some of the recent discoveries, and just generally give you an idea of what we know about this beautiful formation. But first let's start with a bit of a history, because the first ever observation of this great red spot is attributed to Robert Hooke in 1664, with the second observation being by Giovanni Cassini the year after in 1665. But the thing is, nobody really knows if what they observed was exactly the same spot as what we've seen more recently. In other words, we don't really know if the original spot disappeared and the new spot was created, but the assumption is that it is the same spot, meaning that it might have existed for nearly 400 years. But if so, this is actually kind of strange. The main reason why it's strange is because we've seen these really large storms on other planets, like for example Neptune, but these storms disappear within only a few years and possibly even within a few months. Even the ones on Saturn don't really last that long. And so if the Great Red Spot has existed for nearly 400 years, something must be really special about it. And so right there we already have a mystery. Nobody really knows why this unusual storm persisted for so long. But it seems that in the last 150 years or so, it has dramatically decreased in size. Back in 1879, the observations from the earlier astronomers estimated the size of the storm at around 40,000 kilometers across. But the much more recent observations from only a few months ago have already established that the storm is only about 15,000 kilometers across now. That's almost one third of the original size from basically about 150 years ago. And so something really interesting is happening here, something that is decreasing the size of this object. At the same time, some of the scientists speculated that if the size continues to change as much as it has changed, there is even a chance that it might completely disappear within about 20 years from now, or at least become extremely circular and much much smaller. Although it's already assumed today that by 2040 the storm is no longer going to be oval shaped, it's most likely going to be circular simply because of the interactions with some of the other storms nearby. Now let's actually focus on the things we know for now. So first of all, why is it even red to begin with? Well, the redness here comes from the mixture of two different materials in the atmosphere of Jupiter, specifically ammonia and hydrogen sulfide, which ends up producing ammonium hydrosulfide, which basically gives the storm this unusual red color. We also know that this is what's known as an anticyclone, meaning that it's basically spinning in the opposite direction from what you would expect a storm to spin in this region. So it's sort of doing something like this as you see in this animation. And because it's located about 22 degrees south of the equator, this also ends up producing really high wind speeds up to about 430 kilometers per hour or about 270 miles per hour. So this region has a lot of really powerful wind energy while also producing huge amounts of acoustic energy or sound energy, which ends up moving upwards and then produces this really hot region of upper atmosphere with the temperatures reaching about 1400 degrees Celsius or about 2400 degrees Fahrenheit, which is way way hotter than most of the other parts of the atmosphere on Jupiter. So this is a really really powerful region with a tremendous amount of circulating energy produced by basically the storm itself. But the question is of course, first of all how could it exist for so long, and second of all is it shrinking and is it going to disappear? Specifically, in the last few decades the scientists noticed that several other storms actually interfered with the GRS and they ended up shrinking the size of the object quite dramatically. If you were to look at the pictures from I guess about two decades ago and compare them to the pictures from today, the difference here is quite dramatic. So this is from 1995, this is 2009 and this is 2014. And so there's definitely something really unusual going on here. But some of the recent papers might have finally figured everything out, and to some extent there's even an answer of whether the storm is going to disappear or if it's going to survive and possibly grow in size later on. So first of all, one of the reasons why the storms on gas giants can usually last for very very long times compared to some of the storms on Earth 
is because there is no planetary surface to produce friction in order to basically slow down and stop these storms. On Earth, for example, when any kind of a cyclone forms above water, it can easily exist up to the point where it reaches the continent, and as soon as it crosses the continental surface here, it starts decreasing in power, eventually losing all of its power and disappearing completely. But if our planet did not have continental surface, and if it was some sort of a water world or a gas giant, the storms on our planet in this case could actually exist indefinitely and continuously circulate around the surface. At the same time, when it comes to different cyclones, there is something known as the Fujiwara effect. This is the effect when two storms end up combining or interacting with one another. So for example, if these two typhoons collide with one another, they can either completely cancel out or they can create one massive megastorm if they're both, for example, anti-cyclones moving in the same direction. So they can actually create a much more massive and much more dramatically powerful storm Assuming, of course, everything lines up correctly. And when it comes to Jupiter, there are actually so many of these Fujiwara effects happening right around the Great Red Spot. As a matter of fact, in this visualization here, you can even see these tiny, tiny storms all over the place right below the Great Red Spot. A lot of these smaller storms, all of them are actually anti-cyclones as well, constantly interact with the Great Red Spot. And it just so happens that a lot of recent data from the last few decades indicated that many of these tiny anti-cyclones ended up moving closer and closer to the Great Red Spot, eventually colliding with it only a few years ago. Which a lot of scientists today believe was the reason why the Great Red Spot changed so much since 1995. But here's the question, is the Fujiwara effect from all of these colliding storms destroying the GRS slowly making it disappear from the existence? or are they actually feeding it, giving it even more strength? And well, at least one recent paper that analyzed some of these recent collisions from uh, 2019 makes a pretty strong argument that the Great Red Spot is actually most likely going to grow in size in the next few years. In other words, it's not going to be shrinking. And here's the reasoning. If you were to look at the Great Red Spot, not just from the top, but in three dimensions, it would resemble this. This is actually a video you can watch from NASA that kind of shows us that this unusual storm in some sense can be visualized as clay being modeled on the wheel right there. In other words, in three dimensions, it's sort of tubular in shape. It goes all the way down, possibly even to the depths of Jupiter, much, much deeper than any other storm or cyclone on the surface of the planet. And the shrinking that we're observing is only really happening right here on top with the middle part and the bottom very likely getting even more energy as these anti-cyclones are colliding with the storm on top. Or in other words, it's actually a perfect analogy here. It's as if something was modeling the Jupiter storm. The clay formation here is a perfect representation of what we can find inside the storm and allows us to visualize what's most likely going to happen to this storm in the next few years. So because there were so many different collisions in the last few years from other anticyclones, these collisions very likely disrupted the upper part of the storm. In other words, they made the upper part kind of a little bit less visible. But at the same time, this also has dramatically strengthened the middle part and possibly even the bottom of the storm, meaning that it's actually going to pick up even more strength and become even more powerful and possibly even more visible in the next few decades. Which of course suggests that it's actually not going to be disappearing anytime soon and is very likely going to start growing even more now. And so just to summarize, what this implies is that the collision with all of these anti-cyclones gave the GRS even more power. It means that even though the upper part kind of disappeared and possibly became a little bit more circular, this gave so much more energy to the bottom part and it's going to increase in power even more, possibly exposing the upper part restoring the storm to its original glory in the next few decades. Now, whether this is true or not, well, I guess in this case, really only time will tell, but for now, this is an amazing explanation and actually is a way for us to solve a lot of mysteries of how these unusual cyclones and these storms form and persevere on other planets, except for, of course, planet Earth. More importantly, though, it possibly once and for all solves the mystery of how GRS can maintain its shape and stay on the planet for so long. It's basically able to maintain its shape and its size by literally consuming other anti-cyclones. 
and so for as long as other storms come close to Great Red Spot, they're going to be consumed and give even more energy to this beautiful formation. And so it looks like the mystery is maybe kind of solved. But only, once again, time will tell whether the study is correct. Honestly though, this is actually a pretty brilliant explanation and is also of course something that can help us understand how all of these storms function on other planets as well. For now though, well, let's wait and see what happens. And if the storm does start growing, the scientists behind this paper were probably correct. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.